Hey everyone, I am going to be doing something a little bit different with these videos. This is actually going to be a series of three, and after I do this one, we will see if I want to do similar ones. But let me explain a little bit about what I'm talking about. I know Goodreads has some really shitty mechanics, but it also has some mechanics that I kind of like. And one of them is their community lists. So these are lists that are created by community members and can be voted on by anybody in the community. And I was looking for some fun space opera reads and found one of their lists, which is called Best Space Opera of the 21st Century, and I will leave a link down below. And so I thought it would be fun to read some books on this list. Some of the rules for this list are only books that have received at least 1,000 ratings and then have been shelved at least 10 times as space opera. The ratings thing, ratings is pretty straightforward, but the 10 times shelved as space opera, I was kind of confused how to look it up, and I, it's people in their ratings have said this is a space opera book. I, you know, wasn't too worried about that for the list, but that that is the rules of the list. Um, and the definition of space opera that they have used is space opera, a subgenre of science fiction, is romantic adventure set in space and told on a grand scale. To kind of help those who wanted to add books to the list, the this was what they considered space opera. So I'm going to do three different reading videos for this list. First, the top ten, just straight top ten. Second, the top ten women or the top 10 written by women, and the third, the top 10 written by a person of color or somebody who is not of European descent. And again, that is author um, based. So this is just kind of a general introduction that I expect to probably have on all three of the videos. And then in a bit, you know, I'll tell you which list I'm actually working on. And Today is the 22nd of November that I am working off of these lists. So things do change. Since I have been thinking about doing this video, the top 10 list doesn't change as much, but the female author list and then the people of color author list have changed, like the order of books, because it is dependent on how people in the community rate them. So. After watching this video, if you want to go through and you want to vote for your favorite books or add books, that will change the makeup of the list, but that would be fun. It'd be fun to see different opinions for different people. So hey, this is the top 10 female authors from the best space opera fiction of the 21st century list. I don't know if this video will be done before the normal top 10 or if that one will be up first but one of them will be so either way i have a preset introduction for all three videos so on to the books ranked number one is ancillary justice which i have read q clip i have read this one all before this list and it was something i rated before cop pile and i rated it a number five which meant that I really love it, I want it to be part of my collection. So in Ancillary Justice, we follow Breck, who is an AI of or a part a part of a ship's AI in this universe. The there's an AI with the ship, and then each level of the ship will have an AI. And so Breck is an AI for third level, if I'm remembering it right. It's been a while since I've read this book. Yeah, so in the first book, it's a revenge story. Breck is on her way to kill the supreme leader of the Radic Empire. Not sure if I said that right. We're moving on. Um, because this head of empire is what caused the destruction of her ship. And she was one of the fortunate ones to get out of the ship. And so she's now bent on revenge, and this empress has multiple selves, just like a ship's AI can have multiple selves, this empress does as well. And I really 
like I said, I really enjoyed this story concept. I like Breck. I think she's a fun character. I know I'm saying she because in my mind she's a she. And also because all the pronouns for everyone in this uh, civilization is she. They do talk about in other civilizations they don't. They'll go back and forth. Be so I am going to use she because that is the pronoun of her empire. Ranked t number two is, is The Long Way to a Small and Angry Planet by Becky Chambers, which I have read. Cue clip. Okay, so this book follows the crew of the Wayfair as they are on their way to a job to bore a hole, a wormhole in space for travel. At first I was kind of confused on the makeup of this story because I thought it was going to just be following Rosemary Harper. And then after a couple chapters I realized it's more of an episodic storytelling, whereas each chapter is a little vignette of from one of the characters on the ship and you get their life, kind of their life story, how they think and feel about things as they go on to the small angry planet. And it's something that it's a it's a style of storytelling that I really enjoy. It reminds me a lot of Robert Heinlein's juvenile stories and how they're more episodic, especially like the Rolling Stones. So I really enjoyed this book and I gave it five stars. And fun fact, I saw my dad with it or saw that my dad has it recently and I was asking him what he thought and he's like, well, I haven't quite started it yet. And for me, that was kind of cool because I haven't seen my dad read a lot of modern science fiction, but he's the one I got my love of space opera from. So I'm excited to see what he thinks of it eventually. Number three is Ancillary Sword by Anne Leckie. I have not read. Even though I really enjoyed the first book in this series, I had picked up the second book, started reading it, but I have not actually finished this series. So I'm kind of excited that part of this list is I will actually finish that series. Then we'll, I'll see how Breck has ended up with me. Hi. Oh. Okay, so today is the 11th of December, and I finished this book last night, Ancillary Sword by Anne Leckie, which is the second in the Radic Empire. I'm not even sure what it's, the Imperial Radic. I'm not sure what the series is actually called. I just think, I think of them as the Ancillary series because they all say Ancillary on them. However, anyway, so yeah, I really enjoyed this book. It was really great to get back into the world and to be following Breck again. I really like how Anne Leckie um, shows you other characters and their thoughts and feelings through the data that Breck is receiving through the ship and what Breck sees as well. But you don't know 100%. So something else I liked about this book is this is a complete story. You can pick this book up and not have read the first one and you're still going to have a satisfying story from beginning to end. Some things are going to be a little bit confusing, but I think Anne Leckie did just the perfect amount of information drop from the, like giving you the information that you needed from the first story that you could happily get through this story without any issues. And I mean, so many times you see like the second book is all setting up for the third book in the trilogy and it's kind of a lit down disappointment. This one wasn't for me. I gave it five stars. Can't wait for my next read. And number four is Ancillary Mercy by Anne Leckie. Good morning, everyone. Well, this is morning for me. Today is the 9th of January and last night on the 8th of January, I finished Ancillary Mercy. And for some reason, I keep getting the switch with Ancillary Sword. But no, this is Ancillary Mercy, the last book in the trilogy about Breck. And I loved it. I gave it five stars. This uh, continues with Breck's war against Anander Mianami? Mianad? I don't know. Anander, I'm just going to say. And... I think the characters were outstanding. I like how Anne Leckie did a really good job with showing multiple people react differently to situations and different ways people can break down. Also, different ways that people can relate to one another. 
And I, I enjoy getting to see that people can be affectionate with one another and not have a sexual relationship. I'm a very affectionate person. I love giving hugs to everyone. I realize not everyone likes hugs, especially my sister. So I, I'm aware of that. But it's nice to see people being just affectionate and not having any ulterior motive. So that was refreshing. And for me, this just was a very good conclusion. Unfortunately, since it's the third book, I can't really give you much of a plot of what's going on because it would spoil everything else. But I was satisfied with how this book ended. It felt, it felt right. It felt exactly like Brick. And I suggest that everyone go read this trilogy and don't be like me and wait years in between the first and second and third books. I will catch you guys later. Number five is Fortune's Pawn by Rachel Bach. I have not read anything by her. Hey everyone, today is the 3rd of February and yesterday I finished Fortune's Pawn by Rachel Bach. And first off, I really like this cover. It actually made me think of Hilary Swank when I saw it. And I don't know if that was the design purpose or not, but I just really like this cover. And I really like the book. This book follows Debbie Morris as she is an ambitious fighter. She's an ambitious mercenary and she has just joined a crew to try to further her career or put it on a fast track rather than continue to go slowly. And the she's already been warned before she signs up that signing on to this crew or signing on to the ship is very dangerous. Things always seem to happen to it. And she just knows that she, or she just gets the job as security. So she meets the different crew members and she's like, oh, this should be pretty straightforward. The ship is listed as a trader ship. And as they start making stops, things just seem off to her. And she starts trying to piece things together. And that's something I love about her is even though she's a total badass when it comes to fighting, she is she does not know how to be subtle. She does she lacks the skills to investigate quietly. And it I think that was a nice balance to her personality. It really took her out of the whole or it it was a good way for the author to miss the the woman is good at everything trope. From fighting to sex appeal to intelligence. I mean Debbie is very intelligent, but she doesn't think through her actions before she does them. I mean, she does to a point, but anyway, I really enjoyed this book. I, I don't want to say too much because that kind of gives away what's going on. And the book is a complete book, but it is left, or it does end at a point where you know there has to be more. And I'm really pissed at Rupert. So go read the book and find out why. Thanks. Oh, and I gave this five stars. Number six is Trading in Danger by Elizabeth Moon. I have not read this yet. It's really cold. All right. Welcome back, everyone. Today is the 4th of February, and last night I finished Trading in Danger by Elizabeth Moon. This book follows Kailara Vata as she has been asked to resign from the Space Academy where she's studying and goes home and her and she's from a commercial trader family and they immediately put her to work. They put her in a ship that is supposed to be going to a junkyard to be decommissioned and on the way she stays true to her family values of trade and profit and finds a way to earn money and then starts trying to look at how she can fix the ship instead of having to junk it. And in the process, she ends up going to a section of the universe where a war is starting. So this is definitely a space opera, and it's kind of in the vein of the military science fiction, but not completely. So like, I mean, Kylara or Kai, as she goes by, has military training, but she is a civilian in this book. I really, I really did enjoy the characters in this book and how their actions were very authentic 
you know, how they, their logic, how they followed was great. The only complaint I have that is the part of the very beginning where she's asked to resign. The reason why I think it's completely stupid and illogical, but once you get past that reason, everything else in the book flows and it, it's a really good read. I gave this five stars. Number seven is All Systems Read by Martha Wells. This is a novella um, following Murderbot. I have read it, really enjoyed it, gave it a five stars. Um, the first novella is Murderbot on a mission. Murderbot has hacked its own governor system and it's just kind of hanging out. It's doing its job, but it would rather be watching the entertainment feeds and not what the silly humans are telling it to do that is unlogical. And on this mission, it seems like some other people want to kill the people that Murderbot is supposed to be protecting. And that's where the conflict comes in. Number eight on this list is Cinder by Marissa Meyer. I have read it. I did enjoy it. I gave it four stars though, because it's not a book that I plan on rereading. It's kind of a YA cyborg Cinderella story. I would like to finish the series, I just have not picked them up yet. Number nine is Valor's Choice by Tanya Huff, and I have not read it yet. Hey everyone, today is the 15th of February, and I actually finished this book a couple days ago, but I had started then a vacation and I was helping my husband weatherproof our apartment because it's really cold right now in the Midwest, so I didn't have a chance to update you. So I have successfully finished Valor's Choice by Tanya Huff, and I really enjoyed it. Now for this first book, you didn't get so much of the space opera feel, but you got more of a military science fiction, which I still really enjoy. And this follows the Staff Sergeant Kerr, I think is her name? Yeah, Torin Kerr. And she's a combat staff sergeant she's doing the job of a first sergeant and a general comes along and pulls her and her combat troop that has just come back from combat into a diplomatic mission and she's there none of them are very happy about it because that's not what they do and she at the same time she's training a new second lieutenant and I had to check with my husband and he said that as he was describing it, it sounded like all the military information is accurate so if you also like military sci-fi, you're not going to be cringing with the different ranks. You know, it seems pretty accurate for that. But yeah, this so they're pulled for a diplomatic mission to go to a new world to impress a new culture that they want to join their confederation. And I really enjoyed this. Um, I gave it four stars. It wasn't something that I just was desperately wanting to read every day. But when I did pick it up, I always enjoyed what I was reading. So I will be continuing with this series because I'm curious what happens to Kerr. Number 10 is Exit Strategy by Martha Wells. And this is a continuation of the Murderbot story. And I have read it and I liked it and I gave it a five stars. So just wanted to film an outro to this video. I have really enjoyed doing this uh, type of video where I read the top 10 li in different lists. I'm not surprised that the top 10 list that I finished was the female authors in space opera. And I still am working on the straight top 10 and then the top 10 for non-European descendant authors. So that would be anybody who's not white. There were a couple authors on the list that I've been like, oh yeah, everybody says I should read them. I'll get to them eventually. But this gave me the opportunity to actually read their works and now I'm continuing. Uh, one author, at least I had read her alternate uh, author name for a fantasy series that she had written and didn't realize she also wrote science fiction. So, I mean, that's one of the issues if you have different pen names for fantasy and sci-fi. Your base might not know that you write everything because I don't follow authors' websites or Twitter. All I'm interested in is in the story that I am being given, and that's all I based my enjoyment on is that book, that story, not the author. I will probably continue to do this throughout the year and work on other science fiction and fantasy lists. I even have, I think, like a cozy mystery list that I think would be fun to do in the future. 
So, yeah, I'd like to know what do you guys think of this? Did you enjoy getting to see like me talk about the books that I read specifically for this list? Have you read any of these science fiction authors or these science fiction books that are supposedly the best top female author books? I will be including a link to the Goodreads list down below in the description. And remember that list is open to anybody who has a Goodreads account and you can vote for your favorites. It'd be fun to see that list change as more people vote and add books to it. But thank you for your time and I will have, be back with another video. If you enjoyed this video, I do ask that you please subscribe to my content. I'm going to be trying to put out some more interesting videos like this. I do focus more on science fiction, but I also enjoy reading fantasy and we'll have more fantasy videos coming out also in the future. Thank you and have a good day.